In this video, I'm going to show you how to do image calibration using Astro Image J. It's possible to perform all the image calibration steps in a single operation, but I recommend first creating master frames and then applying those to the light frames at the end. The first step is inserting a world coordinate system using the Sky 10. As, all, as long as all the frames in an image set are nearly aligned with one another, Astro Image J can track through them and perform photometry on all the images in the set after you have marked the target, comparison, and check stars on the first frame by looking for the corresponding star images on all the frames on the assumption that they shift only slightly from one frame to the next. However, it is not uncommon for tracking to be lost over the course of a night, and it can be cumbersome and time-consuming to repoint the telescope to the precision required by Astro Image J to successfully track through an image set. Fortunately, Astro Image J can also track stars based on their celestial coordinates, i.e. their right ascensions and declinations. To enable this, we first need to write a world coordinate system, WCS, into the FITS headers of our images. A WCS consists of a set of plate constants that are, that are parameters that are used to compute the right ascension and declinations of each pixel in the image. To obtain the plate constants, a minimum of three stars having known coordinates must be identified and marked in an image. While it is possible to use Astro Image J itself to insert a WCS, that entails the images being uploaded to a server, analyzed, and then downloaded back to your computer, which slows things down considerably. A much better option is to use the Sky 10. To enable the Sky 10 to perform the necessary pattern matching, it must be told the general area of the sky in which to search and also the plate scale, which is the number of arc seconds on the sky by which adjacent pixels are separated in the image. How to determine the plate scale will be discussed separately from this guide. In our setup, the right ascension and declination to which the telescope was told to point are written into the images at the same time that they're acquired. Pointing errors mean that these values are not quite correct, but they're close enough for the sky 10 to use as a starting approximation. Open the sky 10 and choose Tools Image Link. In the dialog that pops up when you do that, choose Known Image Scale and set Image Scale Best Guess to 0 0.5 arc seconds per pixel, which applies to the QSI 632 camera in combination with the Mead LX600 telescope that we use. Now click Open Fits. Go to the folder that contains the images that you want to analyze and select all the CCD, image, CCD images files uh, into which you want to add a WCS. And remember that you can use Shift Click to select a range of files. You won't receive any indication from the Sky 10 that the load was successful. As long as you don't get an error message, you should be okay. Finally, click Find Astrometric, Astrometric Solution to begin the insertion of world coordinates. So you'll see it's starting here, and it'll keep displaying the Astrometric Solution results, and those are being written into the files themselves, into the FITS headers. This is going to take a while because there's a lot of files here that it has to process. So what I'm going to do is to pause recording and then I'll come back to this when it's done. Okay, we're back. So you can see that it is now completed inserting all of the world coordinates. And you can see at the bottom it says 470 succeeded, zero failed. So all of the insertions were successful. Uh, on the other hand, insertion of the WCS sometimes does fail, uh, often for no obvious reason. The Sky 10 will tell you when this happens, as in you'll see that it will say that some of them failed in that list, but it won't mark the file or provide a list of the images for which it failed, which is kind of silly, but unfortunately that's the case. If the Sky 10 reports any errors, use Astro Image J to examine each image set into which you've inserted a WCS. Move through the images in the set to see if the WCS has been successfully inserted, in which case you will see the right ascensions and declinations as you mouse over the image. 
move images lacking a WCS into a no WCS subfolder that you created to hold them. After you're done inserting WCSs into all the images, you can close the Sky 10. The next step in calibrating your images is creating the master bias frame. If you will be applying dark frames to light frames or to flat field frames that do not have the same exposure time as the darks, and that'll be the case in this example, you'll need to first create a master bias frame. So what you want to do is first bring up Astro Image J and then click on the DP button on the main window and use the settings in the CCD data processor dialog uh, that I show in the guide that I posted. You'll get two windows, a DP coordinate converter window. That's not the one we want right now. We want the CCD data processor window. Note that we are using the median instead of the average to compute each pixel in the master bias frame. This does a better job of rejecting outlier values due to events such as cosmic rays. Of course, you should replace the directory and file names in the uh, example shown in the guide with ones that are appropriate to the task at hand, not just literally copy all of those entries, so that you can readily identify the date and chip temperature when the bias frames were created. Um, I want you to follow the pattern that I indicate in the guide, and so I'll talk about that as I use that pattern here. So, in particular, uh, there's only one of these boxes on the left that you want to check right now, and that is build under bias subtraction because we are building the master bias frame. And again, choose median as opposed to average for combining the raw files. And then we need to fill in the name of the folder that contains the uh, raw bias frames that we're going to use to create this master bias frame. So I'm going to click on that folder icon right there. It'll bring up uh, a file selector. And in this case, I have it in my pictures folder. And, and you'll find in uh, the case, uh, for your case, that it may well have been set there too, but it might be something different. You might have chosen a different folder. In any case, right now, uh, I'm going to go to this uh, folder called 20... 18070809 calibration that contains the uh, all my calibration frames, including the bias frames. I'm going to hit select there, and so that's been filled in. And then in this box next to that, I need to tell it generically the names of the files that contain the raw bias frames. So let me in uh, the Windows Explorer file manager, go to that same folder. And notice that the way I have all the bias frames named is there's a date, 2018-0709, July 9th of 2018, underscore bias dash 0001.fit, and then uh, dash 0002.fit, 003.fit, and so forth. So when the bias frames were acquired using the camera, uh, I set it up so that all of them would start with the date that the biases were acquired, underscore bias, and then it automatically put numbers attached to the file names. So what you can notice here is that generically, all of the bias frames, as opposed to the other frames, have capital B bias, bias as part of their name. And so I can tell Astro Image J that by doing this. I'm going to say star bias star dot fit. Uh, I don't really need the dot fit, but I like to do that because all of the image files end with fit, which means uh, as the extension, which means that they are fits image files. Star is a wildcard character which matches anything in a file name. So star by a star dot fit will pick up any file whose name is anything followed by bias followed by anything and then ending with dot fit. So Astro Image J will recognize all of those files that contain bias in the middle of the name as being 
files that are bias frames. And then I also have to tell it uh, where I want to put the resulting master bias frame. And I could put it anywhere, but I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the calibration frame folder as well. That's what I would typically do. So you could open the folder selector again and uh, select the folder that way. You can also just copy paste the name. So I'm just going to control C, control V to put the same name in the box below. And then I need to give the master bias frame that it's going to be creating a, a, a name. And the pattern I want you to follow is specified in my guide master bias underscore y y y y m m d d underscore temperature dot fit what i mean by that is to call it master bias and use a capital m and a capital b so master bias and then underscore and then type not today's date but the date when the bias frames were acquired because the camera's characteristic can change over time and so you want to attach dates to all of your calibration frames. So the raw biases were obtained on 2018 July 9 and so I indicate that with 2018-0709 and put in the leading zeros on dates that have less than two digits in them. So 2018-0709 then an under underscore, and then uh, these uh, bias frames were acquired at a temperature of minus 15 Celsius. And I happen to know that, but if you need to find that out, you can double click one of them. And then you can go into the FITS header by clicking this button, display FITS header right here in the window. And that'll bring up the FITS header. And then if you look, you can find that there's a keyword that specifies the temperature. There is set temp and CCD temp, and those should be the same. CCD temp is the temperature that the chip was when the image was actually acquired. Set temp is what you told it to be, and if you're doing everything right, those will be exactly the same thing when you acquired the images. So this, these images were obtained at a temperature of minus 15 Celsius, and the bias frames will depend a bit on the temperature they were obtained at. So it's important to know that as well. So I'll put in underscore minus 15 C, and then dot fit. I want to tell it that it's a fit file, that a fits file that it's creating. Double check that you have everything exactly as in the dialog in terms of the boxes that were checked, namely build under bias subtraction. And then once you've done that, once you're sure everything is right, then you can click start and a log file window will pop up that will be recording what Astro Image J is doing at each step along the way. And you want to save this so that later on you've got a record of how the calibration was performed so that you could detect any errors that were made later on if you find things are fishy. So what you should do then is you should save this. And so you can go File, Save As. And um, then what I recommend is just calling it the same name as the master bias file that you created, but append .log instead of .fit at the end. So what you can do is you just, in the dialog box, you can the file selector, you can just click on the master bias frames name that you just created, and then go in to the file name box and just replace .fit at the end with .log and hit save and then you'll be good to go. And so then you can close the uh, log file window uh, and uh, then you will be ready for the next step. So I am going to now close this window that contained the bias frame, uh, one of the bias frames and I don't need it anymore. And uh, now we'll go on.
Our next step is to create the master dark frame. In the case I'm doing here, there's only a single exposure time for all the dark frames, but you might have a situation where you have multiple exposure times, and in that case, you need to do what I do here for each different exposure time. It's very important that you only combine dark frames having the same exposure time with one another. Never combine dark frames having different exposure times. So, go to the CCD data processor window again. Under bias subtraction, you want to uncheck build and check enable because we're going to go ahead and subtract the master bias frame from the master dark frame that we create. Then under dark subtraction, we want to check build because we're going to build the master dark frame. Be sure that you check medium, uh, median as opposed to average as the way to combine pixels from different frames. Also check debias, and that's what tells Astro Image J to go ahead and subtract the master dark frame, master bias frame from the master dark frame. And then in this first box under directory, you need to tell Astro Image J what folder to look for the raw dark frames in. And in my case, that's again going to be that same calibration folder that I've been using. The box underneath that is for what folder to put the master dark frame that's created into. That again, I'm going to use that same calibration folder. So I've control C, control V into both of these boxes here, the name of the calibration folder. Under file name pattern, in the dark subtraction uh, row here. In the upper box, we want the generic name of the raw dark frames. And in this case, what will suffice is star dark star dot fit because they all are 200 second exposures and that pattern fits all of the file names. So star dark star dot fit is what I will enter there. If I had, say, also 100 second exposures and 200 second exposures, and I had the foresight to include the exposure time as part of the file name, which I generally do, then here, instead of just generically star dark star dot fit, I would say have star dark star 200 s dot fit to only pick up the 200 second dark frames and combine them with one another. And when I was doing the 100 second dark frames, I would change that to 100 s dot fit. But here, star dark star dot fit will work because we've only got a single set of dark frames that all have the same exposure. In the lower box under file name pattern in the dark subtraction row, we want to put the name of the master dark frame that we're going to create. And the pattern that I suggest that I would like you to follow is master dark. I like to capitalize both the M and the D, underscore, and then we are subtracting the master bias frame from it. That's called debiasing. So we will include that in the file name, debiased. And then we want to include the date that the raw darks were obtained because again, uh, ca the camera's uh, characteristics can slowly change over time. And so it's important to indicate when you've acquired your frames. This is once again, July 9th of 2018, so I'll add 2018-07-09. The exposure time is very important for dark frames, so we want to indicate that as well, 200S. And the chip temperature is also important. You uh, must always combine darks that have the same chip temperature as well, and it should be the same as the temperature that the bias uh, frames were acquired at. So I don't have it as part of the file names here. I probably really should, but in any case, it's once again, as you could find out by going to the FITS header, minus 15 Celsius. So I add minus 15 C to the file name, dot fit. Always be sure you double check everything before hitting the start button, that all the right boxes are checked and none of the uh, wrong boxes are checked, only the ones that are indicated in my document that I shared should be checked here. So everything looks good. So I will now click start. Once again, a log window pops up that uh, lets you see everything that Astro Image J is doing in order to create the master dark. And again, we want to save the log file for future reference in case we suspect that something has gone wrong later on. 
and we will save it under the same name as the master dark that we just created but again we will replace the .fit extension with a .log extension. And then once it's saved, you can go ahead and close the log window. And now we are ready to move on to the next step. Now we're going to create a master flat field frame for every filter through which data were acquired. Never combine flat fields made through different filters with one another. The illumination pattern on the chip and the locations of dust donuts from dust on the filter itself are unique to each filter. Thus, you should only combine B filter flats to make the B master flat and so on. So again, we go back to the CCD data processor window. So under dark subtraction, we uncheck build because we've already built the master dark. We check enable because we are going to subtract the master dark from the master flats that we create, we are going to uncheck debias because we already debias the dark frames in the preceding step, so we don't want to do that twice. You do leave scale checked because you want to be able to scale the dark frame uh, exposure values to match the exposure values, the exposure times for the flat fields. So under flat division, I want to check build because I'm going to be creating master flats. Again, let's combine them using median as opposed to average. And I'm going to go ahead and check the remove gradient box. And what that will do is to compensate for any uneven illumination where one side of the chip is more brightly illuminated due to the other side as a result of whatever it is that we're photographing in order to make the flat frame, the flat field. In this case, I'm going to be combining flat frames that are photographs of the twilight sky, and those do tend to have a brightness gradient in them, a small one, because the part of the frame that is uh, an image of the part of the sky that's a little closer to the sun is going to be a little brighter than the other side of the frame. So we'll go ahead and remove that gradient. Now in the upper box, as usual, we need to specify where uh, what folder contains the raw flats. And so I'll do another control V uh, into that box and I'll control V into the box below that, which is the folder that the master flat fields are to be stored in. And now I'm going to specify the generic name of the files containing the flats in question. So I've gone over to the calibration folder in the Windows uh, file manager and notice that I have B twilight flats and I twilight flats and also R and V twilight flats. And again, we only want to combine flats made through the same filter with one another. So when I make this generic file name, I need to account for that. So let's first create the B master flat. And so what I will do is for the generic name here, I will put B star and then what will work it's not the only thing that would work, but what will work is B star flat star dot fit because all the B flats file names fit that pattern. So B star flat star dot fit will do the trick. And then I need to specify the name of the master flat file that I create. And the pattern for the name that I like is master flat capitalize the F. Uh, the date's important. Again, uh, new dust, dust donuts will uh, form as more dust collects on the filters over time, for example, or if we clean the filters or the telescope optics, that will change the dust donut pattern. So you need to associate um, the flats with the date that they were taken. So in this case, the date is 
July 8th of 2018, and so I'll say 2018-07-08 underscore, and then um, I am going to indicate the uh, chip temperature because it's important that the darks that I subtract be at the same chip temperature as the flats are. And again, that's going to, in this case, require minus 15 Celsius. And I verified from the Fitz header that these flats were acquired at a temperature of minus 15 Celsius. And again, it would have been a good idea to include that in the file names as well. And uh, then I need to say what filter is involved here. So I will say underscore B, and then I'll put dot fit. And then as usual, double check that all the right boxes are checked and not checked as the case may be. So everything looks good here. And I will press start. Now I have created the B master flat. And so I will click save as and create the log file again with the same name as the master flat, except that the fit extension is replaced with dot log. So I'll go ahead and save it. And then I will close this log window so that when I make the next flat frame, uh, it'll start a new log. So now I'm going to go ahead and move on and make the I master flat. So this is a kind of lather, rinse, repeat situation. What I can do here now is say, OK, change the generic name of the flats to I star flat dot fit because the I master flats fit that pattern. Uh, the, the I raw flats, I meant to say, fit that pattern. And then I will name the resulting master flat with a, na with a file name that ends in underscore I. And so again, I can press Start and save the file for the log file with the master flat name uh, extension fit replaced with log and so forth. So you will continue doing this procedure for all of the filters and uh, then you'll be ready to move on to the next step. Finally, we're at the point where we apply the master frames we've created to the light frames or the data frames or the science frames, the ones that we're actually going to be performing measurements on. Those names are all synonyms for one another, light frames, data frames, science frames, to create the fully calibrated frames on which we will perform aperture photometry. So uh, one thing I need to say is that it's very important to only apply uh, a master flat obtained through a given filter to light frames obtained through the same filter. So you would never apply a B master flat to a frame that was obtained through the R filter, for example. You would only apply a B master flat to frames obtained through the B filter. So again, go to the CCD data processor window. And under flat division, we want to uncheck build because we've already made the master flats and check enable so that we will apply the master flats now to data frames. In the top of the window in science image processing, go ahead and check enable. And then under directory, we need to tell Astro Image J what folder contains the science images. And in my case here, your mileage may vary. They're in that same Hello Pegasi folder. And in this case, they're in this folder right here that I'm going to click 2018 07070708 July 7th, 8th, and 9th of 2018. And then I can say select. I'm in the right folder now. And then under file name pattern, we need to give a generic name for the images that are going to be processed. So in this case, I'm going to start with the B images. And so what I do is I click on any image file in the folder. It doesn't matter which. So this isn't a 
click on one, shift click on another one like you might be used to. Just click on any image name and then it'll take a guess as to what you want the file name pattern to be. Um, this would probably work, but what I'm going to do is to just change this to b underscore star dot fit because in fact all of the b uh, filter images fit that pattern of b underscore generic dot fit. Um, actually what it had before would not have worked because it had the date of 2018.07.07 and in fact I also have images with different dates in here like 0708 and 0709 so I did need to change that in fact. Okay now um, we also want to go under fits header updates and click general and that'll bring up that DP coordinate converter window that we're finally going to use here and what this is going to do is allow Astro Image J to account for the fact that Earth is orbiting the Sun and so the light from our target of interest will arrive at Earth at a different time than it would arrive at the center of mass of the solar system and that light travel time will cause errors if you don't account for it and Astro Image J is able to do that as long as it knows what object you're looking at and so what we can do here is enter the Simbad object ID and in this case we're going to be looking at images of the star LO Pegasi and LO Peg like that suffices. I hit return notice that it fills in the right ascension and declination of LO Pegasi uh, on the uh, in these boxes down here in the DP coordinate converter. And then the other thing I want to do is tell um, Astro Image J the observatory ID. In our case that will be Perkins Observatory and by the way once you've done this once that will become the default and so you won't have to keep changing this in the future. If you look at another object you'll certainly have to change that but this will stay Perkins until you change it which is not very likely for us. So there's Perkins OBS Delaware so I can check that and then what Astro Image J is able to do is knowing the right ascension and declination and our location on Earth from the observatory ID and the time at which the image was acquired which is written into the uh, image itself uh, the fits header it can actually calculate the altitude and azimuth at the time the image was acquired and that's important because it allows us to determine if it was for example too low in the sky for us to be able to reliably measure it because there was too much atmospheric absorption happening at that time. More about that later but in any case um, once we've set those up now I go back to the data processor window Notice that I am looking at the B filter images, but up, oh, be careful. Under flat division, I'm telling it right now to divide by the V flat. And remember, what did I say? Never apply flats from a different filter to the images that you're acquiring. So I need to change this to the B filter flat, like so. And then also under save calibrated images, enable that because otherwise it's just going to overwrite your raw images with the calibrated images and if you make a mistake that's not reversible. So what I like to do is put them into a subdirectory and I like calibrated by AIJ as the name of that and then it'll keep the raw files and write the new files into the subdirectory so that if you make a mistake all you have to do is delete those mistaken files and rerun the calibration again. You can choose between 16-bit or 32-bit images. The 32-bit images take up more space, but you can do somewhat more accurate uh, photometry on them. We'll explain that uh, later on. So for now, just take my word for it. We want to use 32-bit images. So we'll go ahead and check the or click the 32-bit radio button there. And uh, then, as always, double check that everything looks right. Compare it to the uh, generic image in the file about image calibration that I shared. In this case everything is looking right to me. By the way, never check debias here because the way I'm having you do this is you've already debiased the dark frames 
when you created the master darks. And so we don't want to do that again. So always leave D bias unchecked. The only time you check the bias is when you're creating the master darks. Okay, double check everything. And then you can push start. And now notice that an image window will pop up and it will show you each calibrated image as it creates it, which is kind of fun to watch. So it's going to go through all of our B images and calibrate them. So maybe I should be playing some music right here, but I don't have any music to play. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. No, maybe I should stop that right now. And it'll take a while because I have 115 images of the through the B filter in this folder that need to be calibrated. So be patient. Right now I'm on the second of the three dates, July 8th, so we're making progress. You can see up at the top it's telling you what image it's working on. You saw one go by there that was kind of distorted and in general, before you do the photometry, you should go through the images and throw out the ones that have problems with them like that. But right now I'm just going ahead and generically calibrating them all. Almost done. All right, there we go. Okay. So if you go back to the file manager, you will see now that there is a calibrated by AIJ folder. And if you double click that, you'll see here are the calibrated images that we just created. OK, <coughs> we want to save the log file. And in this case, what I suggest is put it into that folder that contains the calibrated images, in this case, calibrated by AIJ. And for these B images, I like to give it a name like B calibration log.txt. And again, don't skip this step because if you find that there are problems later on, you want to go to the calibration log and you might see, oh, I accidentally applied the wrong flats to these or something like that. So it's always good to keep a record of what you've done like that. So I can go ahead and say save. Now I'll close this window so that when I do the next round of calibrations, a new calibration log is created. Otherwise, it would append to the one that I just made. So I'll go ahead and close the image window. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the I images. And I don't have to click the folder icon again and bring up the dialog. I can just change B star, B underscore star dot fit to I underscore star dot fit. I have to be sure again to change the the uh, the master flat to the I master flat. So I have to make that change. Change the underscore B to underscore I there. And then I can hit start again. And now I will be calibrating all of the I images. And so this will continue on and on. And I'll just go ahead and watch this happen again. And at the end, we're going to save the log file to icalibrationlog.txt. Um, and then um, not shown here, you would want to do this for all of the different filters. So in, in this case, I have also R and V filter images. And so you should do that as well. But I'm not going to include that as part of this video. I will leave that to you. now still on July 8th. And now we're on July 9th and it's going to go to something like image 30. And by the way, you saw um, streaks in some of the images that can be either satellites or airplanes flying through while we're acquiring the acquiring the images. That's not a very uncommon event, unfortunately. Um, 
and with the Starlink satellites that SpaceX has been launching, I suspect that will become a more common event, which is not a happy thing. But in any case, um, <laughs> what can we do? Not much. So I will save this as now I calibration log. Notice you can just click on the B calibration log file name as a quickie for entering that part of the file name and then in the file name box just change it to I calibration log. All right, close window, close window. And again, uh, I would expect you to continue on with this and do this for all of the filters. In this case, there would also be R and V filter images that you would need to do this for.